So Lucid just posted their delivery numbers today, and unfortunately, it's a bit of a bummer. We kind of foresaw this in the last quarter with the fact that the production ramp for the Lucid Air was going particularly slowly. And you know, at first, I was willing to give them a pass because I'm like, hey, they're a startup, and I'm sure production went fairly slowly for Tesla too, and they're trying to be a company that cares more about quality control. You know, from the get-go, they kind of are setting the expectation of being a more low-volume luxury automaker. They're not trying to be the next Tesla. They're not trying to be as common as Honda Civics or Toyota Camrys, but they just posted that in quarter two, so over the span of three months, they delivered 679 vehicles. Okay, so this is up from last quarter, which was 360 vehicles. So, okay, you're in the hundreds game, Lucid. You're in the triple figures. I guess that gives you a bit more validity than Nikola, for example. But I guess I have somewhat high expectations after the company's been active for this long when Rivian has been delivering vehicles longer and they've had a much more consistent doubling effect when it comes to deliveries of their vehicles, going from 1,000 to over 2,000 and then in the next quarter, they posted over 4,000, which means that basically Rivian's ramp is reasonably slow compared to Tesla's, but there's that consistent doubling effect quarter after quarter. They're usually able to produce and build more than twice as many vehicles as they did in the subsequent quarter, but Lucid was unable to even double deliveries from Q1, which is a bit concerning when Q1 deliveries were not that high in the first place, and maybe my expectations are unrealistic because I know that the Rivian is arguably arguably a lot more tricky a vehicle to mass produce. I mean, I know the Lucid has a lot of new technology going for it, you know, with their upgraded powertrains that are super efficient and they're going for higher luxury materials like the cloth on the inside and fancier displays and fancier audio systems and all that. But I feel that still the main limiting factors with EV production right now are batteries and chips and the Rivian uses way bigger battery packs than the Lucid Air does. And they're able to ramp up to, you know, over 4,000 vehicles in the past quarter, whereas Lucid, which is using battery packs that aren't as large, is still struggling to break the 1,000 mark. And both of these companies kind of started production around the same quarter. So that's what's kind of making me wondering, like, what's going on with Lucid and what's preventing them from ramping as quickly as Rivian can? It may partly be because Rivian has a lot of cash in the bank from investors, whereas Lucid, uh, not so much. In fact, most people are pointing out from the call that spending actually increased and they have some substantially less cash than Rivian does on hand. So I apologize for comparing these two brands. I know that they have very different products, but they're both electric vehicle startups that are suffering from the same chip shortages and battery shortages, and they're both trying to race towards profitability. So that's why I'm comparing the two a lot, but the revenues were worse than Wall Street was expecting by quite a bit. And on top of that, they cut their production estimates, which if I'm looking at how many vehicles they've delivered in the first half of 2020, I actually still think that their production estimates are are too generous because you know originally like a few years ago they expected to deliver 20,000 vehicles in 2022 then after the last earnings call they had to rewrite expectations and say oh actually it won't be that much and they pushed it down to 12,000 to 14,000 vehicles and after this earnings call they readjusted guidance and cut it in half again now saying they just expect to build around 6,000 to 7,000 but so far in 2022 they've delivered a little over a thousand vehicles and in the last half of the year, they're expecting to get to 6,000. That would mean in the next couple quarters, they have to increase their production rates by more than double. In fact, more like five times the production rate they've been at in the first half of the year. So after years and years and quarters and quarters of delays and then lowering delivery expectations and missing out on guidance revenue, that makes me think that Lucid has something fundamentally wrong with the structure of the company, especially when we can see Rivian clearly showing a path to success. They're obviously not profitable yet, but they're ramping and they're using a lot more sales than Lucid is. Not to mention Rivian is trying to ramp an R1S and the van all at the same time. Plus they're working on the Adventure Network already and they're looking at ways of cutting spending like downsizing some of their staff, which we talked about. So I think Lucid needs to make some changes. And if anything you take away from this, like maybe you're a big fan of Lucid, you love the car, you love the design, you love the range and efficiency and all that. There's things to like and I'm not trying to deny that. I think the 
the Air Pure especially was just a fantastic deal for the money. Three years of Electrify America charging, over 400 miles of range, and it's around $70,000 with the federal tax credit. That's a pretty freaking insanely good deal, but it might not ever happen if the company goes bankrupt before they're actually able to build that car. So that's why I want to double down on a few things in this video. Lessons we can learn from Lucid struggling to ramp up this vehicle, and that's one, being the king of range really doesn't matter at the end of the day. I know a lot of people have said, oh, Tesla needs to have a 500 mile range Cybertruck because towing exists and they need to have a range that beats the Rivian and beats the Ford. Here's another takeaway. No, they don't. Tesla does not need to be the king in range. Lucid has been the king of range for a while and you don't really get any extra credit for that. You don't get additional awards. You don't get additional funding. At the end of the day, the companies that are going to survive the recession and the supply chain nightmare that is EV production are the companies that know where to cut costs and know where to compromise effectively. A lot of the time, Tesla compromises and takes out things or lowers range and doesn't make it as good as they expect or misses EPA targets. But Tesla realizes that doesn't matter. Ultimately, what you need to focus on is delivering products. And because there's so much demand for electric vehicles, whoever can build the most of them is ultimately going to come out on top. And that's what we're seeing right now with the startup race between Rivian and Lucid. Rivian is prioritizing production efficiency and building as many vehicles as they can. And no, they're not perfect. There's quality control problems with Rivian. There's software complaints I've seen a lot of people have. Same thing with Tesla. You know, they've been known for bad quality control for years, but it's not bad enough to hurt demand. And I get the feeling that Lucid emphasized the wrong things when trying to ramp up their vehicle production because back watching their hype videos and their unveiling videos, they seem to be all about having the best possible range in any EV and having the best quality control of any vehicle on the market. And honestly, I've seen a lot of complaints from Lucid owners and YouTubers even testing out the vehicles is that the software is kind of disappointing and the quality control isn't that great and the luxury features aren't as great as a Mercedes S-Class, which is very close to the price or sometimes more than the price of a Mercedes of a similar class. So when you emphasize and prioritize the wrong things with your company, you drive yourself towards bankruptcy. And I have a feeling that Lucid trying to emphasize like we need this really high quality material, we need this certain type of carpet or we need this certain type of glass in our vehicle so that it feels luxurious and that it feels premium is putting a too high standard on the product and that's slowing down production because there's not a great supply chain in place for all of the high quality materials they want to use or they were focusing too much on having high range and they're limited on battery cells and that means that they can't ramp production very much because every single vehicle they need to build so far needs a 113 or 118 kilowatt hour battery pack. Having those giant battery packs in every single vehicle you make despite them being super aerodynamic and having some really impressive powertrains that are lightweight and efficient built on a higher voltage architecture. Those are all great engineering feats, but if you're unable to ramp and you're unable to bring in enough revenue to keep your company afloat, none of that stuff is going to matter. So I absolutely expect Lucid to probably have a capital raise by the end of the year where they start diluting some of the stock to keep themselves afloat. And I bet the vultures are kind of circling. I wonder if there's some bigger tech companies out there thinking about buying them out because I do genuinely think Lucid has come up with some great technology, especially with those powertrains and that higher voltage architecture. And I think a lot of people have fallen in love with the design. It's very stealthy and very epic looking. I still personally prefer the Tesla, but I know a lot of people that love the look of the Lucid. So that intellectual property and the powertrain development and all of the redesigns they've had to a battery pack that Peter has talked about in the past, that might be worth something. But if they're struggling to stay afloat, a buyout is looking more and more likely every time we have one of these calls because it's going to lower the value of the company and make it more digestible to a big tech brand that might want to scoop them up. Definitely not Tesla though. Tesla will not care what happens to them. So ultimately, I think they've come up with some really exciting stuff. I'm just worried that they've over-prioritized certain parts of the business. I know it's not the chip shortage because Rivian is able to ramp up and I know it's not lack of sales because again, Rivian has bigger battery packs than Lucid does and they're ramping up much, much faster. So it's got to be something either at the assembly process or with the supply chains they've chosen to go with or with the size of the battery packs they've chosen for these vehicles. I just think it's such a missed opportunity that if you developed a powertrain this good and you came up with a design that's super aerodynamic, that would have been the perfect opportunity to go with like a 300 mile range EV instead of 500. I know that doesn't sound as exciting, but if they would have done a 300 mile range EV, they could have used a substantially smaller battery pack. When you have powertrains that efficient and you're a really aerodynamic design, you could get excellent range with a very small battery battery and then you could use 
use fewer cells per vehicle, ramp up production a lot faster, and okay, darn, you don't have the longest range EV in the world, but maybe you can deliver more of your product, and that would allow you to actually keep your company afloat and start turning a profit a lot faster. So I hope the lesson here is that there is a compromise to taking things slowly, and there can be damaging effects to saying, ah, we don't need to be in such a big rush. Tesla wants to ramp things so quickly. No, we want to take our time. We want to get everything right. We want to be slow with this. Yeah, if you only have so much cash in the bank, you don't have the time to be slow with quality control and software, which honestly, I don't even see Lucid doing that great a job with in the first place. Last video I did on them, I got lots of comments of people saying, yeah, quality control with Lucid is honestly kind of sketch. So if that's what we're hearing from the first 1,000 deliveries, it does not look particularly bright in the next year. So I hope something changes. I hope they're able to get their act together and ramp up a lot faster, but earnings call today was absolutely a bit of a disappointment. But what did you guys think? Feel free to let me know down below. And thank you to everyone on Patreon supporting this channel directly. Seriously, helps us out a ton, as does just watching these videos. So thanks again. Have an excellent rest of your day.